Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. By God's grace, we are continuing with our theme, Bible Characters and Lessons. And we're dealing with, we are studying the life of Moses. And our subject for today is God delivers his people. God delivers his people. You know, the truth is, when it comes to salvation, God delivers every saved member of humanity individually. You got to know that. We're never saved in groups, but individually. Salvation and redemption is based on personal and individual deliverance from self and sin and Satan and the world and the flesh. That is what deliverance from Egypt was all about. That's what it symbolized. That's what it pointed to, deliverance from sin. Further, please understand that uh, this deliverance, God's uh, salvatic deliverance starts with death. Hmm. You know, just like with the, in the sanctuary, the first thing on the agenda, no sooner you walk through the door, was death. The death of the firstborn in the deliverance from Egypt. Uh, and matter of fact, uh, if you can receive it, if you can understand it, it happened with the Israelites also, only it happened to them under the blood. <laughs> Help me, Lord. That is why Jesus declared, you must be born again. This has always been the plan of salvation. Death has always been the first thing on the agenda. You see, this means that the firstborn, the old man, your present character must die. And someone altogether new must be born. That is God's deliverance. It starts with death followed by a birth, followed by the deliverance, followed by a new life, followed by freedom to live a holy life, followed by power given to live obedient to righteousness. That's what it's all about. The blood meant that the Israelites were saved through the death and resurrection of the firstborn. That's an internal work. The blood meant that they were to be born again and set free from any and all bondage of heart, soul, and mind. When it comes to this thing of sin and selfishness and Satan and the world and the flesh. And they were covered by the blood, by the life by the righteousness of the Lamb of God. That's what it's all about, saints. Let's pray and look at the scriptures. Our Father and our God, we are thankful for your word, for your truth, Lord. Teach us. Teach us the spiritual application. Teach us the meaning of your word that applies to us personally and individually. Otherwise, we're studying surface stuff and we get no personal benefit. Lord, help us. Enlighten us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God delivers his people. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 11. And I'm going to read, my wife is going to read verses 4 through 6. And the Bible says, And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, mm -hmm. from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beast. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. The actual deliverance of Israel from Egypt started with the death of the firstborn. The Bible says, and God says, I will go out into the midst of Egypt. It's the work of God. Nothing else can do this work. Amen. Nothing else can do this work. For the Egyptians, it was on the physical plane that their 
uh, children, their firstborn child died. And you know what? That child stayed dead. But there was an application for the children of Israel. Their firstborn, their old man, their natural nature had to die. That old character had to die. And something else had to be born in them. They were to become new creatures. They were to be delivered from sin and slavery and bondage to self. The service of Satan, the religion of Egypt, they were to, to be delivered from that. All of that's included. But death was the first thing on the agenda. That's why Jesus says in John 3, 3, and it has always been the case from Adam's day all the way down to the last person who will ever be saved. What does the Bible say? What does Jesus say? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It is not true that the people in the Old Testament were saved based on something different than the of folk who are saved under the New Testament. It has always been. Except a man be born again, he cannot see, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It was the case with Adam. Uh, that's why he had to sacrifice an animal and be clothed with the animal, the covering of righteousness. And the blood covered Adam. The same with Abraham. The blood covered Abraham. It has always been the case. And except you be born again, you cannot see or enter the kingdom of heaven. The children of Israel were delivered from Egypt. But in reality, in the spiritual realm, God is giving them a new birth, mm -hmm. a new beginning. Here's what Romans 6, 5 through 8 says concerning this process that God and God alone does. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Yes. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. He that is dead is freed from sin. Uh, you don't have to serve sin. The Bible says, if, if, if you are planted in the likeness of his death, if you genuinely are put to death in Christ, if you have genuinely been crucified to sin and self and Satan, you will be resurrected a new creation. That your old man, know it, just understand it, the old man is crucified with Christ. That the body of sin might be destroyed. You're no longer controlled by the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. It doesn't have any power to control you anymore. I didn't say it didn't have any pull. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have any power to control. All of this is uh, uh, implied and revealed in the death of the firstborn in, in Egypt. That firstborn in us, that nature... That character that you uh, are born with and, and formed throughout your early life, before you come to Christ, it has to die. And something altogether new has to be resurrected. Help us, Lord. Yes. Help us. Now, I want to talk about the blood. Exodus 12 and verse 21 through 23 says this. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lentil and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lentil, and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Now, the Lord is the one who's going to pass over. All right? That's what it says. For the Lord will pass through. It's the Lord's work. And when he sees the blood, when you're covered by the blood, the destroyer will not come into you. You know, when God puts us through trials and tribulations in order to crucify us and purify us, it is not the destroyer. <laughs> it's his work to save. Yes. It's his work to save. 
And so what they had to do is uh, uh, get a lamb and uh, cut his throat, take his blood, and strike it over the doorposts because the Lord was going to pass through that night. Yes, and those who were not under the blood, under the death and resurrection of Christ, under the death and resurrection of their own soul in order that they might be born again and saved, those who were not under the blood had a problem. Because in the physical realm, their firstborn would die. And if they don't receive Jesus, they're going to die just like the firstborn. The blood represents us being in the Christ and covered by the blood of Christ. Exodus 14, 1, 3, and 4. What does the Bible say about uh, Pharaoh? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness have shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. You know, when it says I will harden Pharaoh's heart, it means that Pharaoh's heart was hardened through disobedience. Uh, keep eating that stuff, your heart's going to be hardened. Keep looking at that sin and evil and wickedness on the TV, your heart will be hardened. See, it was the choice of Pharaoh. God didn't arbitrarily say, I don't want him to be saved, so therefore I'm going to harden his heart and make him do evil. That's not how it was. The man chose to do that. He chose to disregard God. He chose to defy God. That's like many of us do. Yeah, many of us do that. We do that with our money. We do that with our time. We do that with the way we treat the temple of God, our body. We do that with not witnessing. We do that uh, when we won't speak up for God and his cause. We do that. We do that. And we harden our own hearts. And God says, uh, I will harden the heart of Pharaoh. I'm going to permit him to disobey. He could have put him to death, though he couldn't do it. Nope, he permitted him to disobey. He gave him life. And so he allowed him to disobey, thus his heart was hardened. And he said, I'm going to do this so that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. I'm going to show them a thing or two. And what does the Bible say in Exodus 14, 5 through 8? Let's, let's carry on with this narrative. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with and high hand. The children of Israel went out with a high hand, but uh, Pharaoh became defiant. He was not going to honor what God said do. With all the evidence that he had, with all of the plague that had fallen upon him, with his nation nearly absolutely destroyed, he still determined to defy what God said. And the heart of Pharaoh and his servants were turned against the people of God. And they said, why have we done this? Why have we let Israel, go from serving us. Satan cannot stop you from being set free. The demons cannot stop you from being set free. Wicked people, evil people, in and out the church, because they're in the church too, cannot stop you from being set free. The Bible says that, uh, and this is for Bible scholars, the Bible says that he took six, six, 600 chosen chariots, Six is the number of a man, six, six, six. You know, man was created on the sixth day of creation a week. Yeah, uh, uh, six, six, six is the number mm -hmm. of the beast, the number mm -hmm. of a man, all right? So uh, Pharaoh took 600 chariots. He's going to defy God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's in rebellion against God. These people who went out with a high hand, he's going to go out and bring them back. I don't care what God said. Mm -hmm. I don't care what power did this uh, horrific stuff to my nation. I will not submit. I will not yield. Mm -hmm. I will not let God's people go no matter what he says. Mm -hmm. I have the strength to stop this thing. 
And he went out with a hard heart. Yeah. Uh, God, it's time for God to go to work. Mm -hmm. And he went to work, mm -hmm. just like he does with us when he's delivering us from sin. Now don't, 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 don't fool yourself that you can't overcome some things. Mm -hmm. that, that is a lie. I didn't say it was easy. But I said that you can overcome. And we must be overcomers. The same power that rolled out the heavens like a scroll is available to you to overcome anything in your life. Fear. Diet. Huh? Being worried and concerned. Not trusting God. Faithfulness with your money, your time, your talents. Serving the world instead of serving God while claiming to be serving God. All of these things God can deliver you from. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Exodus 14, 13 and 14. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. That's what Moses told the people. That hadn't happened yet, but it was their place. It was their duty to believe it and then see it happen. And Moses says to the people, which is the same word for us today, yeah. stand still and see the salvation, salvation of the Lord. Of the Lord. Mm -mm. Don't run ahead of the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Don't run ahead of the Lord like Abraham did. Bless his heart, the father of the faithful. Don't, don't run ahead of God like Jacob did. And he suffered, but he was brought back. He's a man of God. His name was changed to Israel. Don't run ahead of the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of God, for the Lord shall fight for you. Uh, if we don't have the Lord fighting for us, mm -hmm. we are absolutely lost. We have no powers to change ourselves. We have no power against the enemy that would be effective. The Lord's got to fight for you. Amen. We, we've got to learn these lessons from the deliverance of, of, of Israel from Egypt. It's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that binds you in your life? Be delivered. God has showed you and illustrated to you that he knows how to fight the battle. He can deliver you from whatever that thing is mm -hmm. or whatever those things are. Mm -hmm. And so in Exodus 14, 15 through, seven, no, 15 through 18, the Bible says this. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Now, in previous texts, God plainly said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Huh? The Lord will fight for you. You, you, you just hold your peace. He, he clearly told the children of Israel that. And then he turns around and, 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 and God says to Moses, what are y'all crying unto me for? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Yeah. So which, what are they supposed to do? <laughs> Stand still or go forward? Let me tell you, here's the point here. Mm -hmm. Do what God says do. Yeah. That, that's what you do at all times. Do what God says do. Mm -hmm. Have faith in God. Yes. You see, deliverance does not uh, uh, abide in, or nor is it based on inactivity. Mm. Is based on doing the will of God, submitting to God, believing in God, and doing what's right, obeying every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's how you move forward. And God went to work. He told Moses, lift up your rod and stretch it over the sea. And what, what will happen is the sea will be divided and the children of Israel will not walk through the mud. Mm. But they're going to walk through on dry land in the midst of the sea. 
And what's going to happen is uh, that one who is defiant against me, his heart will be all the more hard. He'll have enough nerve to go into this dry pathway in order to destroy you. And I'm going to get honor upon the Egyptians. The devil might chase after you. Uh, wicked people might chase after you. The demons might chase after you. But God knows how to annihilate them for your sake. For your deliverance, that's where the Lord fights for you in, in realms that you can't possibly do anything. You can't see them, you can't feel them, you can't know them, but God knows. And God will fight for you. And here's what happened, Exodus 14, 19 through 22. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea, up on the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. The Lord, the waters were a wall mm -hmm. of protection. Mm -hmm. I said the, the waters were a wall. Stood right up in the air. Mm -hmm. They were a wall. They were walking on dry land. Mm -hmm. they, the, the waters were a wall yeah. on their right hand and on their left. Saved through the water. Mm -hmm. The same water that will destroy the Egyptians was a wall of protection to God's people. Mm -hmm. The same water that destroyed the, the wicked to, during the flood were the very means by which Noah and his family were, were saved. Mm -hmm. The same water that destroyed all the other uh, children of Israel in, in Moses' time during mm -hmm. his birth is the same water that saved Moses mm -hmm. and kept him alive and brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. Uh, God is at work here. Yes. It says that the angel of the Lord went from in front of the children of Israel because he was their leader. Mm -hmm. I said he was their leader mm -hmm. and stood behind them. Uh -huh. And so when it stood there, the Lord stood there. He was light to mm -hmm. the Israelites, but darkness to the Egyptians. <laughs> yeah. Now the children of Israel could not see that, mm -hmm. but that is what was happening. Mm -hmm. And so the e Egyptians couldn't move. Mm -hmm. They couldn't pursue, they couldn't sneak up on him during the night because God had them covered. <laughs> he was fighting the battle for them. And then at the same time, all that night, God is opening up a pathway through the midst of the sea. He was dividing the water all of that night. A strong east wind opened up the water, made the water to stand up on both sides. The ground dried out. Wow. Yes, sir. And they walked through on dry ground. Yes, sir. And the water was a wall of protection. God will work miracles. God can do what he wants to deliver you. Mm -hmm. You just got to obey. Yeah. You can't be like the uh, uh, Egyptians, obstinate and defiant and trying to linger in sin uh, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Lot's wife. You, mm -hmm. you can't look back. Move forward. Mercy, Jesus. That's what God requires mm -hmm. us to do. And so now what happened? Exodus 14, 23 to 28. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the <laughs> Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Yes. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. And there remained not so much as one of them. It remained not so much as one of them. 
Can God set down our enemies? Can God deliver us from demons, from people, from situations, from circumstances? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Utterly. The Egyptians presumed to pursue the children of Israel through this path in the sea. I would have been scared to do that. Mm -hmm. Something strange going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, something supernatural is going on here. It's got to be God at work. Mm -hmm. You have to be insane in sin to run out there to try to get them and kill them. <laughs> Why would that work? <laughs> There's a power holding the water up on Ooh, both sides. Oh yeah. How is it going to work? The ground is dry. You know no ground is dry in the bottom of the sea. Mm -hmm. And God looked at the uh, uh, armies of Egypt and mm -hmm. Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And he took off the chariot wheels and they began to realize, uh-oh, God is fighting for these people. Yeah. Let us flee from them, but it's too late now. Too late. It's too late now. And then God used Moses. God is doing all the work, but he uses his servant. He uses us. He said, listen, you stretch out your hand over the sea. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, the, the water is going to return. Whoa. And it's going to destroy. Mm. To the point where there's not so much as one of them left. No mm. horse, no man, mm. nothing, nothing living of that army. Mercy. All are going to, I'm going to get glory. Mm. The Egyptians back home who didn't die in that uh, catastrophe knew that the Lord was God. <laughs> He's a powerful being. He is not to be played with. Mm. And these are his people. Mm. Were they worthy? Were they holy and righteous? And that's what, no. But God had chosen he was in the process of purifying them. He had delivered them from sin, from self, from service to Satan, from the world, from the flesh. He had delivered them. See, that's how it applies to us. God wants us to come out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. He's standing willing and ready to deliver us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to linger in Egypt. Mm -hmm. We want to linger in selfishness and in sin and in service to Satan. We want to linger in the things of the world. And mm -hmm. We want to linger in serving the flesh, the lust of the eye and the lust of the uh, uh, flesh and the pride of life. We want to do those things. And so we linger. And thus we are not delivered. We sometimes are defiant like Pharaoh, refusing to obey God, mm. feeling like it's going to restrict your liberties. Mm. Oh, God, help us. Yes, yes. God, help us to be delivered. Mm. This whole thing of the children of Israel being delivered from Egypt is a uh, testimony to us. It's a revelation to us how God is able and God is willing and God is desirous of delivering us from self, from sin, from Satan, from the world, and from the flesh. He wants us to have total deliverance. The first thing on the agenda is death. You remember the death of the firstborn? Mm -hmm. That old man in you's got to die. That old character and you got to die. That's the first thing that deliverance does. Mm -hmm. It's an internal work. Let's take the spiritual application. You got to die. Mm -hmm. You got to die. Just like when people came up to the Israel, uh, up to the sanctuary, when Israel finally built the uh, sanctuary later on down the road. First thing on the agenda when they came through the door was death. They had to take out the knife and cut the throat of the lamb. And then there was a sacrifice done. Mm -hmm. First thing on the agenda when it comes to deliverance mm -hmm. is death. You must be born again. That's what Jesus says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to die in Christ and be born again in Christ. That's why you got to be covered by the blood yeah. before the deliverance happens. Because when you're under the blood, there's a death and a resurrection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. When you're not under the blood, there's just simply the death mm -hmm. leading to eternal death. Mm -hmm. But if you're in Christ and you're covered by the blood, mm -hmm. that death can't do anything but turn into a resurrection, mm. that's right, which will eventually cause you to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, help us to see in the deliverance yeah. of Israel deliverance. from Egypt, our own deliverance from sin, yes. from Satan, from self, yes. from the world, yes. from the flesh. Uh, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this word this morning. Deliver us. Yes. Help us not to just read wonderful stories about how men got drowned in the sea and all of those wonderful tales and then 
Go off and not be blessed ourselves. Mm -hmm. Go off and not be delivered ourselves. Go off and not see how these things apply to us. And they must apply. Jesus said, you must be born again. Otherwise, you cannot see. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Help us to grasp the lesson, Lord. And not be defiant like Pharaoh. Help us to do what you say. Help us to eat right. Help us to be a witness and open up our mouths and witness for the Lord. Help us not to have these attitudes that we have. Help us not to be fearful at all times, hesitant to do what God says. Nor help us not to waste time with looking a whole bunch of satanic stuff mm. on the internet, or on the television, mm. listening to it on the radio. People who have uh, uh, sold their souls to the devil in order to get uh, high positions in the music industry. We listen to the stuff they are putting out. Mm. Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Deliver us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Message.